Guys, I've had such a blast doing these first couple videos, so I wanted to share a couple things that I've picked up along the way. Now I have so much more to learn, but learning is a great adventure. I'm all about the adventures, so I just wanted to share some things that I've picked up. All right, first up, let's talk about the gear. Now, GoPro has some fantastic products. There are also a bunch of other fantastic action cameras that'll provide an excellent point of view reference, but really, the phone does such a good job. Now, I'm not gonna recommend that you slap this onto a chest mount or a helmet mount, but there are so many things that you can do with this. Now, if you have access to GoPros, good gravy. I was fortunate enough to have a buddy who had a bunch of extra GoPros that he didn't really need, didn't really want, so he basically just gave me a Hero 1, Hero 4, Hero 5, Hero 6, which is doing the filming right now, and then I just decided that, you know what, I needed to invest in some really good gear, so I went out and got the Hero 8. This thing is amazing. You'll see some great footage coming out of this. As of today, I haven't filmed anything with this yet, so you'll see. Oh goodness, the sound. Cue terrible audio quality videos right about here. Make sure you spot your line way ahead of time. Try to avoid the bigger rocks. Let's do a couple test runs. We're gonna check the sound. We're gonna see if my face is working, all that. Sweet. The sound has been such a struggle. Now, first I thought, all right, cool. The new Hero 5 has two different mics on it. If one's getting overwhelmed with the wind, the other one will take care of it. But the original audio is awful. Just, it's awful. It's better than, I don't know, 1906 phonograph technology, but it's still not okay for voiceovers, for effective writing commentary for sharing the things that I want to share out on the trail, especially if there's any wind. That's another reason why I'm actually inside right now, so I can control the lighting and the wind. I can talk about lighting all day long, but when you're out there on the trail, you essentially have your own lighting. We'll get to more of that in the editing section here. But the audio quality has been quite a struggle. Now, first, a simple lapel mic seemed like an okay way to go until I went and tested it out on a actually windy day. It was down the Terror Ridge ride, which if you look at that original footage, you can hear the wind just on the climb up. It's pretty bad. And then as soon as I started the descent, it was terrible. So I decided to just cut the audio all together and played some songs. Now that created some copyright issues, so I'm not allowed to monetize those videos, which I don't care. But to get some effective quality sound, you gotta have an effective windscreen. Now this is a normal little mic made by Comica. This is a CVM-VS07 mic, cost me about 25 bucks on Amazon. It's not half bad. Now there are much better microphones out there. You can go to town on microphones. In my other line of work, I have to put a lot more money into microphones to record some different sounds. That's a thing. I'm a drum teacher, so picking up all that drum noise is quite the thing. But with this little guy, this little windscreen has seriously saved my bacon. The audio quality goes way up in the wind. I got a pack of five of these for like 10 bucks. Just invest in it, do it right. Take my experience and learn from it. Have some more fun with it. But next up, I wanna share some other little bits of gear. Joby's little Gorilla Pod. You can do so much with this thing. It's worth the investment. I am a very frugal person. It's hard for me to spend any money on anything, but this, totally worth it. No, I'm not riding with this, but I will put this in my pack and save it for when I want to do something out on the trail and have a very effective way to grip the camera or a phone in any way that I want to. Plus, this thing will grip onto anything, whether it be a tree, a swing set, or anything else you could throw at it. Really, really effective there. The camera is currently sitting on a tiny little, who knows where it came from, tripod that literally just came out of the junk bin, but it works for this application, so let's go with it. Next up, I mentioned the phone. When you're filming though, make sure you put your phone on mute or airplane mode or something. One of my videos, <laughs> it was the Revel Rail Review test ride video. 
I started to get a phone call, so you hear this faint little something ringing in the background before I cut the footage. Totally random, funny, weird little thing that you can just put your phone in airplane mode, it makes sense. But again, something I had to learn. Now let's talk a little bit more about the recording. Funny enough, if you say the word recording, the GoPro may or may not stop. Wait for it. Nope, we're good. Voice controls are fun, but you gotta know when they work and what they're actually set up to do. The GoPro will tell you all of the voice commands that are listed. Try and memorize all those. Oh goodness. Camera stuff. The angles. I have fought angles. I want to get good angles, but they have been such a beast. I can insert so many clips. If you watch all my videos, you'll see terrible camera angles. You'll see angles that work. One of the things I started out with was just a chest mount, but as you'll see in all these other videos, like this one. Chloe got some big drops and jumps and things. We'll talk a whole bunch more about this bike in its own video, but. I had it angled down because I thought, oh, I'm gonna talk about the bike a little bit. And it's just pointed at the ground the whole time. So I angled it back up, so I thought, but I didn't. So I did the whole entire ride, got to the bottom and was like, dang. So now I got to go back and film that particular segment. Also because it was requested, I feel extra obligated to go and do that one. So if you guys request stuff, I will fight to make it work. If even, even if it means going up, back up and doing it again. So we're gonna have to go back up and do that one again. Now other videos where I want to show specific things out on the trail, I've since set up helmet mounts. However, I have one helmet mount on the side because if you put a helmet on top or a helmet mount up on top, it moves the helmet quite a bit. I'll have to do that on a couple of them. But on one of them, I, my helmet that I'm running is the Fox Drop Frame, which has quite a bit more coverage over the ears, which means it has more lateral stability. Hey, look, I got a text, but y'all didn't hear it. Ha! Lateral stability with that helmet, which means putting a side mount on there will work. However, it's going to mess with a couple of the angles. You'll see more of those videos here to come, and you can decide whether or not it works. Top mount works pretty good on my full face helmet. You'll see some of those videos out later but the angles are such a battle. One of the fun features about some of the newer GoPros is that if you get them connected to the GoPro app, you can put them on your phone and actually get a preview of what the camera is seeing on your phone. So if you're running a chest mount, you can get into a riding position, pull the phone out and see what the camera is seeing. Or you can put it on your helmet, pull your phone out, see what the camera is seeing. All sorts of cool things you can do there. But experiment with things. Try the super wide angles. Be advised that if you go wide angle at really high quality, you'll eat through your SD card storage super, super fast. Which then brings me to another fun thing. Double check your gear. I had one of my favorite rides that I did early on and I thought I was going to film the whole thing. It was going to be an epic adventure through this particular area, which I'm going to go back and have to refilm because the SD card that I had was acting up so bad. Like, absolutely terrible. I lost a whole bunch of footage. When I went to render it, it just wouldn't work. I actually posted the thing not knowing that it turned out absolutely awful. And my apologies for anybody who saw that video. It was horrible. Just spend some time in the research. Make sure that you know what you're getting if you got some high quality stuff that's actually gonna work. Next up, the editing. I'm using Adobe Premiere Rush. It is a subscription based, so you can get updates every whenever they come out with an update. Weirdly enough though, I had to go to a previous version of it because their newest one wasn't working for a particular bit of footage that I took on my phone and then had the intention to upload it to the cloud, edit it via computer because trying to edit via the phone really only works if you have a continuous stream of footage and you don't need to do anything with it. But for some reason, this bit of footage was not getting off of my phone. I actually lost a lot of footage because I wasn't able to get it off the phone onto the cloud and then edit it from there. So previous version of that, weirdly enough, solved the issue. Who knows? Maybe Adobe was just having a bad week. Anywho, Adobe Premiere Rush works really well. As soon as I'm feeling confident and comfortable, then I can upgrade to the Premiere Pro. Then we can have some more fun with that. We can use other Adobe Suite products. There are plenty of free applications out there. One of them that was recommended was OpenShot. I didn't get into that one. I've got another buddy using another application but try some things out, experiment, explore. For me, the Adobe stuff works pretty well. 
I've had some frustrations with it, but it's working out. Try not to get super frustrated with your stuff. Believe me, it can be really frustrating, especially when the technology just isn't working or something that you feel like you've figured out just isn't being figured out and it just doesn't work. Just be okay with stuff not working. It's a learning process, so enjoy the process. The editing is all about practice. I'm looking at these first couple videos not as excellent money-making monster videos that I want to just go completely viral, although that would be nice. Rather, I want to get information out there. And I gotta learn. You gotta learn too. Anyone who thinks that they don't need to learn or is over it or whatever, well, they got, they got some issues. It is about the learning. Have fun with it. Practice and enjoy it. Do your best and have fun doing it. A little bit more about the gear, make sure that it is organized. I've got a simple backpack that we've had for who knows how many years just sitting around taking up space. I decided, hey, let's just throw my stuff in there. But I've got individual slots for each camera. I've got baggies for all of the mounts. I've got spots for the tripods. I've got spots for the different adapters. All this random gear. You don't need to invest in a $500 camera backpack unless you really want to protect your investment and you have a $1,500 lens on your DSLR or something like that. Just do what works. What works is having your stuff protected, organized, and with you. You can have the nicest stuff on the planet, but if it's not with you, it's totally useless. Make sure you carry it with you, even if you just keep it in the car. Make sure that it's protected, though. I don't want anybody getting their car broken into and all their gear getting gone. That's awful. So, keep the gear with you. The best gear is the stuff you can use. So make sure it's accessible, organized, and ready to go. You can't always plan on excellent opportunities. Sometimes things just pop up. Be okay asking questions. Whether it's asking online forums, going to Google, I found a really random answer for a really random problem that I had just by going online. But also, don't be afraid just to ask people. If you see somebody taking some footage on the trail, just say, hey, what's worked well for you? What do you enjoy? What is working awesome with your setup? Ask questions. It's totally, totally okay. The people that do the most are the people that learn the most. The best teachers are the most avid learners. So get after it. Hopefully that helps, guys. I appreciate you being patient. Anybody who's put up with my craziness, this whole learning process has been an absolute blast. I'm excited to learn even more. Let's have fun together. Let's learn together. Feel free to let me know in the comments what you've picked up, things that you've learned, whether through my videos or through your own experience. I'd love to hear. So get out there, ride safe, have fun.